Hey, I'm Wino Woman, and today we're talking about wine for the American dream, about a refugee from Yugoslavia who arrived in the U.S. in 1958 with nothing more than $32 sewn into the bottom of his shoe and a dream to one day own his own winery. We're talking with winemaking legend Mike Gergich, who today owns a premier winery called Gergich Hills Estate. In 1976, in a famous blind tasting in Paris, the American Chardonnay that he made for Chateau Montalena in 1973 beat out the very best French white burgundies. That event shocked the wine world and put Napa Valley on the map. He proved that world-class wine could be made in America. In a very poetic parallel, he achieved his own American dream while pushing forward the dream of the entire American wine industry. I was born in Croatia, in the village Desne, very interesting area mm -hmm. that makes uh, Mediterranean food and wine. Was wine making part of your family tradition? It was a tradition and it was a necessity mm -hmm. because we didn't have enough water. So the people was uh, drinking mostly saving on the water, they add some wine into the water, which they called bevanda. It was always on the table in the wooden container with the handle for the kids to drink that instead of water, because water was not good. How old were you when you started drinking wine? Oh, about two and a half when my mother switched me from breast milk to the wine. So how did you first hear about Napa Valley? First, I heard about Napa Valley when I was a student at the University of Zagreb, when my professor Hebrang came back from California from sabbatical leave, and we want to know how California looks like, wine of California, and he didn't want to talk to us. Why not? He was afraid that some spies will hear and put him to jail, so one day, we get him in one room where there's no spice around. So uh, he looked around and, and opened his mouth. He says, he whispered, California, a paradise. A paradise, I thought, whew, couldn't I someday go there and live in freedom and have my little winery and the dream this good luck came true. Mm -hmm. So when you were still in Yugoslavia, you found out that Napa was a paradise and you knew you wanted to come here eventually. Yeah. Yeah. But it took a long time to get here. Yes. But you prepared by getting some American money when yeah. you were still in Yugoslavia. Yes. What did you do with that money? Well, I heard that on border they strip you all for money. And uh, I talk to my shoemaker how I could bring with me uh, $22, which I saved for 10 years. Uh, and he got the idea to take the sole off shoes and put the $32 and cover with the new sole and walk on $32, proud, uh, going abroad. And on the border, they didn't take a look at my, my shoes and I pass it by the $32. So you arrived in Napa to take this job with Lee Stewart and you showed up on a Greyhound bus and you had two suitcases, correct? I had two suitcases, uh, one that I brought from Croatia and I was still in it, those 10 books that was about the wine. And that uh, suitcase is now in Smithsonian Institute in the uh, American history, uh, staying there as uh, immigrants that came to America and made it. Mm -hmm. So what happened in 1976 at the now famous blind tasting in Paris? Uh, 1976 uh, was American bicentennial celebration all around the world. And one gentleman, Stevens Poirier, mm -hmm. decided that he 
get a little promotion for his store and for wine industry to organize blind tasting of the best French Cabernets and Chardonnays and to get some from California. And they came to California and they chose wines. But at the end of Chardonnay tasting, first place came to the 73 Chardonnay made by Mike Gilgich at Chateau Montalina. So what did winning the 1976 Paris Blind Tasting mean to you? It means to me that uh, preparation that I did in my life for 50 years, it, uh, it was realized, as people do say, that on preparation meets opportunity, that's the luck. Mm -hmm. And that was my biggest luck in my life. What do you think it meant for the entire American winemaking industry? I believe that uh, have woke up and energized other winemakers that uh, we can make wine at least as good as French or better. So after you worked at Chateau Montalena, you went on to achieve your original dream, which was to open up your own winery. Yeah. So it's called Gerga Chills Estate. And when did it open? We chose the Independence Day because my dream was in Croatia to come to America, mm -hmm. to California, and be free and independent. So you opened Gerga Chills Estate on July 4th, 1977. Not soon after that, President Reagan served one of your wines to a president of France? Yeah, that's true that um, after the Paris tasting and after publicity that I have made at wine, mm -hmm. President Reagan, uh, how much I know, did enjoy good wines. And so he liked our Chardonnay. And when he had opportunity to go to France, he took four cases of Gergis Hills Chardonnay. So you've been in Napa now for 50 years? 53 years. How has Napa changed since you first arrived? I was very fortunate to learn from icon winemaker Lee Stewart, my first job, and I learned from him uh, what quality makes difference between just ordinary wine. And then after him I joined the Christian Brothers in CIA building in, in, in St. Helena and I learned from them uh, uh, lots of good things. And then I heard about Andrei Chelichev as the best winemaker in America. Mm -hmm. And I gave Nicole, and uh, when I came uh, to see him, he started to speak to me in Croatian language. They opened a new horizon for me. And uh, I worked with Andrei Chelichev for about nine years. And when he retired, uh, I switched to Robert Mondavi. And I had an interview with Robert Mondavi. He looked at me and he said, Mike, if you start working for me, I'll make out of you a little Andre Chelichev. Because Andre Chelichev meant the king of the wine mm -hmm. in, in, in America. I'm very proud of all these uh, Napa Valley wine icons and I learned from them. And when I started to make my own wine, I still remember that a little bit of Lee Stewart knowledge came into that wine, a little bit of Brother Timothy knowledge came in that wine, mm -hmm. a little bit of Andre Chelichev came in that wine, a little bit of Robert Mandavi. So in the Gergich Hill Estate wines, there is a knowledge from all this history carrying on, this all People who have passed away, but their knowledge did not die. They're still going through Gergish Hills Estate Wines. I'm very proud to carry on that knowledge. So you were inducted into the Vintners Hall of Fame? Yes, uh, 2008, which was a very lucky day for me. And uh, my bust is placed in CIA building 
uh, very proud and I think for people who gave me recognition. Uh, this, is, this is only possible in America, I believe. So uh, again, I want to emphasize that my coming to America was the best that ever could happen to me. And that I was fortunate to give opportunities. I didn't come in America to find something for nothing. I came here to find opportunity. And I find that in America there is still opportunities for people who look for them. Mm -hmm. And they have eyes to see them. And that there is best wine is not made yet. There is room to make even better wines than we achieved. And I hope that that will happen, that the next generation of winemakers try to use the knowledge from last generation and increase that knowledge and make possibly best wines ever made in the world. So thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview with me. It's been wonderful and I've learned so much from you. I really appreciate it. And thanks for uh, tasting your Zinfandel with me. So how do you say cheers in Croatian? Uh, Živjeli! Živjeli! Živjeli!